Senator Hahn. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Ranking Member. I really uh, am appreciative of this hearing, as I mentioned to you yesterday on the floor. Uh, my friend, uh, Congress Member Ted Poe, and I have founded the Port Caucus uh, here in Congress. And in December, we actually sent a letter uh, to uh, the Chair of the Homeland Security Committee asking for a hearing such as this. And I am very pleased uh, that we we're, are holding this. And I have uh, been very uh, interested in the testimony. Uh, but I think sitting here this whole time and listening to the question and the answer, I am not feeling any better uh, about where we are in this country in terms of port security. Uh, and I echo many of the comments that uh, my colleague, Ms. Richardson, just uh, made. And while neither one of us actually represents uh, the Port of Long Beach or Los Angeles, uh, those two ports, uh, we call them America's ports, uh, because it is about 44 percent of the trade uh, that comes into this country comes through those port complex. And both of our districts uh, border those ports. Many of our constituents live minutes uh, from those ports. And any uh, attack, uh, natural or man-made, would be devastating uh, to lives uh, and to the national economy. As uh, Ms. Richardson said, in 2002, we had a, a, a labor dispute. Uh, everyone knew it was happening. Uh, there was already efforts underway to divert cargo uh, from uh, the West Coast ports, and yet we were able to determine uh, that it was a uh, one to two billion uh, dollar a day hit to our, our national economy. So, uh, and it lasted 10 days. So, do the math, and we know what what that did also just to, not to our national economy, but uh, the global economy. We heard that many um, <clears throat> businesses uh, throughout uh, Asia actually were extremely uh, impacted by uh, the, the, the loss of cargo moving uh, during that 10 days. Some of the businesses we even heard never recovered from that. So I, I think the threat to our national economy, to the global economy, to lives is severe. Um, and I have real concerns. I have always felt like um, the most vulnerable entryway into this country is through our seaports. Uh, and after 9-11, I think we focused uh, in this country, rightly so, on securing our airports. Uh, you know, and we didn't really take into to account the cost. We didn't really take into account the inconvenience. Uh, I, I think if uh, the traveling public knew exactly what, what it was going to entail uh, to make it through security lines, you know, they would have probably balked at what we were uh, recommending. But we did it because we knew it was important to the safety and security of, of the traveling public as, as well uh, to our commerce. I don't feel like we've, we've done the same uh, with, with our ports. And I know there's a lot of vulnerability still. I'm one of those that would like to see us get to uh, a much greater percentage of uh, scanning. Uh, I really think that's uh, imperative. I think just by your testimony today, you've, you've talked about, you know, that really a lot of what you're focusing on is the layered approach, knowing what is in the manifest, believing what's in the manifest, and, uh, and believing that when it reaches our shores, nothing has happened uh, across the ocean to have uh, tampered with any of that cargo. Since we have implemented this, I know just at the Port of Los Angeles there has been twice on the anniversary of 9-11 a national uh, media company actually shipped depleted uranium uh, through the ports uh, and it was discovered uh, in Los Angeles. Also know since we have implemented this there has been a couple of containers that have come in uh, that harbored uh, uh, folks from other countries. One was 19 uh, Chinese uh, in a, con a container uh, that was discovered by the longshoremen uh, in Los Angeles, not through any of these efforts uh, that are underway. And in terms of cost, you know, the cost that would impact our economy if something were to happen at one of these major ports is significant. But, you know, we were spending um, you know, uh, a lot of money on our, our wars uh, per month. It was $12 billion per month for both of our wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, and, and we believed that was worth it. We believed it was worth it for the national security. I really think this is at that level, uh, and I feel like we are vulnerable. Okay, we, I think we have all talked about how much we want the, a greater percentage of screening, and I think you have answered where we are at. And I think you have heard this morning from a lot of members of this committee that we really 
uh, are interested in seeing you get a higher percentage uh, of scanning. Let's talk about uh, not uh, when something or if something might happen. Let's talk about when something happens and port disruption. Uh, it was touched on in terms of recovering. Uh, and I know that uh, I've, I'm going to be introducing uh, legislation that talks about uh, all of our ports in this country uh, having a recovery plan, because I think that would make our ports less attractive uh, to an attack if uh, we knew that uh, they could get up and running. Uh, in this port caucus, I, we're going to talk about a recovery plan for all of our ports. What would you suggest that we look at in terms of what would uh, be important for our major ports to get back up in business uh, after a uh, major disruption. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman, uh, for your thoughts on, on this very important subject. We take this very seriously, and we appreciate your seriousness about it as well. On the, on the resilience and recovery side, it is something that is not as um, um, it has not been as embraced or as, as thought through as this prevention side. That is because largely we are very concerned about prevention and we have done less on the resilience side. In the United States, that is why we are taking an initiative and building in resilience internationally in our, in our strategy. In fact, we have led the way, uh, partly through the APEC uh, forum, of uh, ensuring a, a trade recovery um, um, procedures are put in place. And one of the main things that they, people will do, and frankly the ports should consider, is having the appropriate information to know where and when things can open so that businesses can rely on in, uh, uh, a real understanding of uh, timing and, uh, and, and, and recovery of, 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 of a disruption. The sharing of information is one of the things that we can do a lot more on uh, as it pertains to resilience of these ports. Let me also ask um, uh, about uh, once we have, uh, at, at the point of origin, we have got the manifest, it, it uh, arrives at its point of destination, we are hoping for the best, uh, that nothing has happened uh, on, on our wide open seas. Can any of you speak to that issue? Are you 100 percent sure uh, that when these containers leave uh, their point of origin and when they arrive at their point of destination, uh, nothing has happened, and what are we doing to ensure that? We try to make as certain as possible of, of that. And, and to do that, that is part of the 10 plus 2 filing. It, it includes information on where the containers reside uh, on the vessel. That allows us to see if they might be accessible while they are on the high seas and to, to determine whether they could be compromised during while they are underway. Uh, and so we do seal checks uh, when they arrive. We are able to compare the, the seals submitted by the, by the importer and the shipper. Who, do, who, does, who does those seal checks? U.S. Customs and Border Protection, uh, CBP officers at ports of entry. So in other words, this is a concern. It is something we take seriously. We work with our, our, our partners in the Coast Guard uh, as the vessels approach uh, the U.S. ports. Uh, but but the, it's do you a do comparison. Seal, do you do seal checks on all the containers? No. It, we do targeted seal checks and also random uh, operations to ensure the, the integrity. See, and that is what makes me nervous, too, <laughs> again, keeps me up at night, uh, is that uh, random, you know, your, your kind of best guess on where to even check the seals. And, you know, as more and more of our ports are going to go uh, automated, uh, I am concerned uh, that the loading and unloading of our cargo uh, by automation as opposed to real folks uh, is also, I think, uh, presents a, a bit of a risk. Thank you. I want to thank the uh, turn my mic on. I certainly want to uh, thank all the participation from the members uh, today. It has been